Hey, welcome back to Happy Little Note Trees. Uh, I recently was doing a video on S-Log footage and how I color grade that. So if you want to watch that video instead of this one, that's over somewhere yonder in the clitty clack tabs. But we're going to just jump right in because I jump right in because I thought it'd be fun to discuss. I in that video I brought out this tool which allows me to pretty much target just this guy's hair. Uh, it's from Mononodes, and I'm not a shill for Mononodes. I don't have an affiliating for you. I just go, this is a tool I use. I like it a lot. It's comparable to Color Slice. Um, so I thought we could turn that off and go over to Color Slice with this guy over here. As an alternate, we're going to just switch this over to a layer mixer node so that we can have this one on, but it's also this one is on off there. And we'll just do... Since we already selected this hair, we know when we switch back there, we have that selection. All right, cool. There we are. All set up. So right now with the layer mixer, we're only pumping uh, PW2, which is color slice over that. And so you're not even seeing that. But when we turn it off, there you go. That's his green hair. And what Mononodes does in this deep dive is you have these four controls down here on the bottom that allow you to easily dial in the hue, the center of the hue you want, the range of the hue you want, and how the luminosity of the hue you want. So you can be very selective in terms of where what you're doing, and you can see instantly on the screen what you picked out. And then the top three controls are what affect your saturation. So you have sat up and down, back and right, and you have density, which is an additive or subtractive saturation adjustment. And then you can affect your hue. So you can make them bright, pink, red, green. We're all green right now, just so you can see it. When we bring this up, now we're going to Color Slice, and we can talk about that. Uh, so Color Slice, generally, uh, it has a really nice uh, sat method, so you can see other videos on the channel uh, on methods of saturation you don't want to use, um, like say primary saturation, which is make some glow versus jumping over here and it adds density as you bring up the saturation. So uh, it's a subtractive saturation, so it brings down, so it's not making it feel like he's glowing, uh, his hair is glowing. The question is, you can bring up highlight mode, which Do I like click on highlight mode? See it? Yeah. Uh, to see what you're selecting, so and and everything like that. And the weird thing is, between red, yellow, and green, skin is what his hair is, but red is what his skin is, and that's what I'm like. What is going on? And I know you can adjust the center range, but like the center range for red is not his hair. And like, where is it? Uh, so in terms of finding his hair, you're limited in its vector search uh, of how it's finding it. And that's what I was very upset about that it just seems so weird that I can almost get a better look at his hair using the skin uh, center. And the other thing you don't have is a way to adjust the range. Like I can't shrink that range. I can't tighten it up because there's all that cloft on the sides um, of the hue. But it functionally does similar things. And this is why I end up using, like if we look at the yellow, just lining it up. And yeah, color slice is in here. And so we're looking at red and skin and we can go skin center, skin. So we're adjusting where the skin center is, but that's affecting his hair. And I don't want that. I don't want that. Or red center, we're affecting, we're only finding his skin. I don't understand why I can't get his hair. And the thing is, if I turn 
you can see that the range on skin is changing as well. So that where the center is on his skin, when it starts at zero, it's right there. But you can see a change, I think, as I dial the center for The center for skin gets bigger as I turn red away from skin. Which, that is concerning to me. So if I adjust yellow, and that affects the next one over. So it is, as you move the centers um, for color slice, you're affecting the effective range of the next hue over. <sighs> That's what's happening with Color Slice and what I don't like about it. Whereas with this, and I can turn this off, turn on highlight, I'm not affecting this and I can actually go and put another parallel out there. Um, and switch this back to parallel mode so that they're both. And I can pull in another DCTL. And let's just say we want skin. So we can bring up highlight. When we have skin, it's still picking his hair because uh, it's got the same feed. And we can dial in just his skin. And we know his skin has a slightly different range than his hair, which it's currently, I know it's bringing up the green hair. We can turn that off. Uh, Luma range, we can kind of dial that in. I know with skin, we're always, oops, let's undo that. I know with skin, we're always going to be tight with that red hue. in terms of where we're drawing that. Can I just find that? So now we've given him red hair, green hair, and we can turn off highlight mode over here. And now when we affect skin, we are affecting the saturation a little bit of that green hair, but it's not too shabby. And it is being specific to the, how it's affecting the skin more. Because if we can push a magenta in the face, or well, make him green, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I'm saying is color slice, I don't like how you're stuck if you're doing it in one node to use color slice, your range can't overlap. Like I can make these ranges overlap, but as we saw where we moved and dialed in the center of the range for skin, it affects the range of the next one over as you work your way down the line. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. So anyways, that's how I choose to use a paid DCTL versus color slice which is part of studio, I think. So technically free-ish if you have studio, which you probably do. So anyways, till next time, have a happy little node tree day. And we'll see you.